Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I'm back again testing Vimple Golden Tiger, both 223 this time as well as 545, uh, because I got a comment, a uh, person was mentioning that the 223 Golden Tiger rounds have an air pocket in them, uh, similar to what you hear a lot for 545. And so I actually did get my hands on some ballistic gelatin and that's what we're gonna be testing today. So, of course, if you're interested in the accuracy of these, as I mentioned, this is a follow-up video. I have done videos on both the 545 and the 223 ammo in the past, which I'll link up on the screen right now. Uh, and then for a little bit on this test, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be firing at 20% synthetic ballistic gelatin from Clear Ballistics. Uh, here is the... So I'm going to be using two blocks. The front block, you can see here, is in pretty good condition. There is an M50, M855... Uh, tip in here and uh, just a few other you can see just channels going through from previous hits but this will be good this will be a good test and just in the event that the round goes all the way through I do have a block in the rear uh, which is in much worse shape but it's pretty clean as far as bullets and all that I mean it physically is pretty filthy um, but that's just kind of to catch it as a last resort in case it does go all the way through so we're going to go ahead and start here with the 545. The guns I'm going to be using for this test for the 545, I'll be using my SLR 104FR. This is a 16 and a half inch barrel, just standard Bulgarian barrel, uh, pretty standard all across the board. As for the 556 or 223 that I'll be using, I'm going to be using my side charging AR-15. This has an 18 inch ballistic advantage barrel on it. So. With that, we'll get started, as I said, 545, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So a few more things before I actually fire. The current ambient temperature is 79 degrees Fahrenheit, so that gel does best at around 70 or 80, so it'll still be ideal for that. Uh, and I'm just doing this at seven yards. So here we go. Let's go over the results now. They are pretty interesting. Uh, pretty much every time that I do these, the results do end up being quite interesting, and this time is no exception. So, starting with the results from the 545, I was not able to recover the bullet. I do have the 223, but uh, the 545 did something pretty interesting. I don't know if you were able to catch it. I'm going to play back the footage right now. Uh, if you look, so the 545 actually over penetrated ever so slightly however it didn't really have that much energy after it left the first gel block but this is something i haven't seen before if you look at the footage very carefully watch kind of behind the target and i'll try to highlight the exact area but uh, i wasn't able to find the 545 bullet until i will rewatch that footage when i came home and studied it and um, the bullet actually passed through the entire first gel block However, it didn't even make it into the second gel block. It didn't have enough energy to even penetrate it whatsoever. What did happen is the bullet went through, it bounced off of the second gel block through the kind of gap and ended up in the dirt somewhere, as you were able to see that little puff of dirt just pop up. That is from the bullet just randomly flying off to the side there. So what we can tell, however, now uh, the caveat here, uh, what I want to talk about is the transient cavitation. I don't have a high-speed camera. This is just a standard cell phone slow motion, which does pretty well. However, it doesn't capture, or doesn't necessarily capture every time, unless you're lucky with the frames per second, the maximum uh, cavitation. So keeping that in mind that the actual effect that the round had on that ballistic gelatin may be slightly different. So what we saw is a pretty quick dump of energy with the 545, which is always good. And you can see also, luckily the camera caught this, since I wasn't able to recover the bullet, that it clearly did tumble because you'll see it taking almost a nosedive uh, towards the base of the second shell block. And of course, then it flew out and bounced elsewhere, but it did tumble. And uh, even that slight bit of over penetration, I would say isn't too big of a concern, especially given that it didn't even have enough energy to enter into that second one. But that is something you'll still want to keep in mind. 
So very interesting results there. That is all I really noticed. Can't really study too much else with the 545 since I simply don't have the bullet. Well, let's go ahead and move now to the 223. So on the 223 here, I was able to recover the bullet. Again, let's just go ahead and start with the transient cavitation. This one looks like it uh, dumped its energy about at the same time, and maybe it's just luck, but it does look like it maybe had slightly more of an effect on the target. Here is the bullet that I recovered, and um, you can see it did flatten. That is very normal in my experience from all the lead core bullets. It just tends to kind of almost squeeze out the lead core out the back, unless you have, uh, I believe, uh, I want to say there was a Barnes projectile. It may have been a different company, but there was one where they tried to bond it a bit better, which worked decently. Um, but you can see the lead did kind of squeeze out here. As a result, we did lose a bit of weight. That is never ideal. Uh, as far as the actual weight retention, so this is a 55 grain projectile. Ended up, uh, the weight was a 44.4 grain. So while it did lose some weight, that's actually really not that bad. Um, in the 545 rounds that I've tested before, other ones, uh, that I have been able to recover. Generally, I was aiming around 50 or 60 percent of weight retention, so this is significant. That's approximately 80 percent. That is very good. Uh, of course, there are some bullets out there that'll be 100 percent weight retention, but just as far as this projectile, that's pretty good. Additionally, it would appear that the original hypothesis that led me to recording this video of does the 223 Vimple have a air pocket uh, did turn out to be true. You can tell because uh, it did tumble, and that is what would cause the tumbling. So that is awesome, and it turned out pretty well. So that concludes the terminal performance tests for the Vimple Golden Tiger in the 223 and the 545. If you're interested in the other videos I did on this, testing the accuracy and chronographing the velocities, then a link to that video will be in the description below. Otherwise, that is all I have for this video. So thank you all for watching. Hopefully this was informative. It was certainly an interesting result, if nothing else. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Take care.